Hey everyone, this is Dr. Bam. Um, this is going to be this foundation video for our Unit 4 um, in Introduction to Education. Unit 4 is the history of schools in the United States and developing a teaching and learning philosophy. Um, the two of them go well together because you'll be using what you uh, connect with in the history of the schools in the United States to help form your developing a philosophy of teaching and learning. So this unit reviews the key developments over the past four centuries um, that established the public schools. So we're going to go back to the colonial times. And we're going to look at how schools kind of progressed um, from when the United States was first colonized. Uh, excuse my children, they're making noises upstairs. Um, to when, um, to current day. We'll also take a look at some groups that were kind of had their own school systems developing at the time and influences them. Um, next, we'll look at the your role in designing um, the schools of tomorrow and what are you going to, how are you going to influence and what are you going to bring into that mix. Um, we'll take a look at some educators and some historical facts in there. So, um, we also take a look at curriculum and how it's changed and developed and it continues to change and develop on a regular basis. Um, Finally, we're going to help you understand how to create your own philosophy, look at educational psychology, um, understand how we help students learn and how that development relates to how we teach. Um, so here's where this foundation video will go. So we will wa you'll watch this video. Hopefully you got there on your own. Um, as usual, I have included chapter six and seven textbook PowerPoints in case you want to use them when you are reading and going through your chapters. Um, you will complete the knowledge check at the end of this and then the additional assignments. Well, that's a bummer. So, the uh, hopefully I don't lose as you saw, I was losing power. Um, the knowledge check is there. Remember that that does not appear in your to-do list. Um, so, one piece of getting into an education program is being able to follow directions and follow through with things in here. So, I'm going to continue doing it this way. You need to click here to go to the quiz, as usual, and complete the quiz this week, it's completely multiple choice and goes over a bunch of the historical pieces um, in our chapters and looks at those influence questions. So make sure you have read the chapters before you do this. I do that because um, we will not be able to cover everything in your knowledge builder. And so you really need to have read the chapters to connect to those different individuals. Um, in the knowledge builder for my online students, you have five questions. Um, we're watching a video about the schools and education in the colonies. Um, top 12 pioneers in education is a link that you will go to. And you need to discuss a couple of them. And it gives a lot of people that you could reference in your assignment this um, unit. Then we're looking at, we'll take a look at the um, Kind of what happened with the Native American children during this time period. Like I said, certain groups were taught outside of what was norm um, or what was the mainstream. Then this one is very good. This is somebody's educational teaching philosophy that they developed. I'm not asking you to do it in this format. You're writing in a complete paper. But she does a very good job connecting what she thinks uh, about uh, different people and what they taught and um, to her own beliefs. And then this goes over a piece that a lot of students have problems with. Um, you probably will be asked to connect to these different philosophies of education. Um, for my face-to-face -face group, this one will not be there. We'll be doing this in class, not this week, but the next week. Um, and we're going to go over essentialism, perennialism, progressivism, ex existentialism, behaviorism, constructivism, and reconstructivism. Um, but for my online students, you'll be completing this one as well and discussing two of the philosophies. Um, in addition, um,
my uh, face-to-face students. Well, you'll have one less of these. I haven't decided quite which one I'm taking out for you yet, but there'll, there'll only be three of these in the builder when you go to it. And we'll cover the other one in class. Okay. So, in addition to the knowledge builder, you have your knowledge application, which, as I kind of alluded to, is the development of your own philosophy of teaching and learning. So, this will be an APA required paper. Um, so, you are going to want to review the APA requirements. Many of you might be more familiar with the MLA. This will um, be APA, which is what most education programs will require writing to be completed in. So using the historical and educational theory information that we've covered in the unit, so that includes your knowledge builder, your textbooks, any lectures from class, you're going to write a one page essay, minimum of five paragraphs and 250 words. It can go into two pages, the written portion. It'll actually be about three pages when you turn it in because you have to have a title page and a reference page. In APA, it is not work cited. It must be a reference page, and I will be checking the way that you format your references. You will lose points if they're not formatted correctly. You must reference in this paper at least four different historical or theoretical influences to what you believe in teaching and learning. Don't just say, I like John Dewey because Dewey. He, I like what he has to say. Nope, not going to get points there. Okay, I don't care that you like him. That doesn't tell me anything. So you need to be specific. I like John Dewey's concept of this, and I will use that concept in my classroom this way. So I'm not going to give specific examples because otherwise I get that example in everyone's paper. Um, go back to that knowledge builder where the one student discusses how she formatted her theory for reference of what I'm looking for, what type of concepts or ideas. You're going to do it in written form, not in a project-based form. Okay, like I said, this is a paper, and I'm going to grade it as a paper. So I expect proper grammar, proper spelling, proper punctuation, um, all of that. Plus, you are going to use APA. APA requires the use of either Times New Roman or Arial, so you need to use one of those two fonts when you're writing. Your font size, if I download your paper because I'm saying this doesn't look right, I will download it. When I download it, it should be a font size 12 or 14. Sometimes Schoology does strange things to papers, um, and I understand that. So as long as it's that format when I download. Review all of APA. You should be double spacing everything, following all the rules um, margin-wise and everything else. Um, Word does have an APA um, automatic formatter, Grammarly. We'll also check for some APA stuff depending on the version that you have. The rubric that you'll be graded by is down here. You're going to get be graded on the four influence, your mechanics of writing, which is your spelling, grammar, and punctuation, your clarity, which means when I'm reading it, it's ease of reading. You have clear thesis and points. So thesis is your, your main sentence, introducing your idea and the pur and purpose of the paragraph. And then you have your uh, additional sentences that support what you're saying in your thesis sentence. APA for this paper, um, all the other pieces of APA are three points. So that means that you have your title page, that you have your reference page, and then your references themselves is three page, three points. They need to be included and properly formatted. Or points will be lost. Okay, so that is your assignment for this week, and that's a that's a heavy-duty one. That's why I wanted to make sure it goes over it clearly. Okay, back to the unit. You have an additional piece in there, and don't forget to be working on your field work as well. Okay, the final project information gathering is your last one. You're going to go take a look at one of the two degree plans that you turned in in Unit 3. You're going to pull it up and you're going to ask yourself and answer the following three questions. Are there any classes you didn't realize you would need before you transferred? What classes have you already taken that were on the plan? And what classes do you need before you transfer? Um, don't say all. Don't say none. I want you to be specific. So list them out. Um, take some time to really review 
their degree plan, review our degree plan. Because I thought some of you might not have it, I went ahead and linked the Hill College degree plans down here. Some of you may be liberal arts if you're looking more at the 712, so you might be an English major or math major. If you're looking at high school teaching, if you're doing EC6, you should be an AAT. Um, you could be something else, in which case uh, you might also be either an A, uh, liberal arts or uh, associate of science um, if you're doing science or the STEM path. Okay, once again, um, I'm going to show you where to get to the field work. So field work is right here, right before um, the unit one. There's also the financial survey credit, extra credit, which is available until October 5th, Monday, October 5th. Um, the sooner you take it, though, the more points you receive. Um, make sure you have done your field work. Uh, it was, you should have done these two things by now, submitted a photo and chosen your choice, and then you should be working on one of the new pathways depending on what you were chosen. Okay, that is it. Have a good unit, and let me know if you have any questions.